When SQL Server needs to modify data in the database, it goes to the disk, it finds the 8 kilobyte page that contains the data that will be modified, and reads that page into memory. The changes are then made to the page in memory, but they are not instantly written back out to disk though, because SQL Server knows, hey, there might be more changes coming up, and it'll be faster if I just keep this information in memory. That way, I can make a bunch of changes to it, and a little bit later, I'll put it back on disk so it's safe. And that safe is a key word, because keeping that information in memory puts the data at risk. If there's a power loss or if the server crashes for some reason, all the information that's in memory but has not been saved back out to disk is lost. Now, SQL Server acknowledges that risk, and it uses a transaction log to keep track of the changes it has made and of which changes have been safely written back to disk. So as SQL Server is making changes in memory, it's just quickly adding a little bit to this transaction log on disk. Now this transaction log model, combined with the page structure, is at the very heart of how SQL Server operates. Here is a schematic of, at a very high level of how SQL Server works. On the top left, we've got SQL Server's memory, which currently doesn't have anything in it. On the top right, there's the disk drive where the files are physically stored, and they're considered safer there because if the computer loses power or crashes, whatever's on disk is, is still there. It's not affected. At the bottom, we have the transaction log, which is a very simple file structure that also lives on disk. So let's say we ask SQL Server to make a change. SQL Server goes to the disk drive, grabs the page that will be affected by that change, and reads it into memory. SQL Server then goes ahead in memory and makes the change, so updating some data, maybe adding some data, even removing data. That same change is quickly added to the transaction log, which remember, sits on disk. Now that transaction log is not a database in and of itself. It's, it's really just a log file. It's not quickly searchable, it's not scannable, it's not indexable, it's not a good place to look up data, but it's a good way to keep track of the changes that have been made recently. Now let's continue. Let's say SQL Server decides uh, to do another change. So we ask it to do that. It reads that page into memory, makes whatever change is necessary there, and adds that change to the transaction log as well. Now at some point, SQL is going to run out of memory for loading all these things in, and it'll say to itself, you know, I need to free up some memory because there's going to be more changes coming down eventually, and I've got this one page with this, this orange change that I haven't really made any changes to that page recently, so Let's assume that I'm, I'm kind of done with that one for now and go ahead and write it back out to disk. Okay, so now that's on disk. So I'm going to go to the transaction log and just sort of check it off. That'll remind me if I need to read the transaction log later that that change was made and successfully saved back to disk. So now we'll proceed to, oh no, the software crashed and everything that was in memory was lost. So that change with the green triangle never existed, but it's okay because it's still down there in the transaction log.